Welcome to Creative Bath Lab. I tried a Lush bath bomb in February of 2019 and have been obsessed with making them ever since. That first year, I made three or four bath bombs every single day. All I can say is bath bombs are extremely finicky and sometimes it feels like they just do what they want to do. I'm going to tell you why you're having these issues and how you can resolve them. Stay tuned until the end for two golden rules. Check out the description for very important information. And if you're looking for a specific issue, just jump to it on the timeline. Powdery bath bombs happens when the mixture is too dry or drying out when molding. Small cracks means the mixture was too dry or drying out when molding. Always make small batches because the mix dries out fairly quickly and it'll never be as good as it was when it was first made. You can wet the mix more, but never spray alcohol or witch hazel. In my experience, it'll fix the mix for a short time, but then the mix dries out faster and worse, and then it becomes unworkable. I've formulated a spray that works best. If you notice cracks forming, you can shrink wrap the bomb to save it. I know it's not ideal, but it does work. Dry the wrapped bath bomb for 24 hours. See, these two were not wrapped and this one was. The wrapped one dried perfectly, sturdy and rock hard. Crumbling bombs means the mixture was too dry or drying out when molding. You can remold the bath bombs. Depending on how long it's been, you can spray the mixture, or if they're completely dry, sieve the bath bombs to a fine powder and re-wet the mixture. Just know that for some reason, the mix will require a lot more wet ingredients this time around. If all else fails, you can recycle the powder for bubble bath, bath soak, bath bomb chunks, layered bath bomb dust, or just use the powder and chunks as they are. Huge cracks in the middle means the mixture was too wet or wet ingredients were added too quickly. Always add wet slowly while stirring. Or you can add citric acid last after wet has been added. Bombs growing or puffing up means the mixture was too wet or wet was added too quickly. If you ever see the mix moving or puffing up really slowly, this means the mix is too wet. Keep stirring it until it dries out and the mix no longer puffs up before you mold. Warts or raised bumps could mean the mixture was too wet, wet was added too quickly, or ingredients weren't mixed enough. Always sieve and fully mix ingredients together every step of the way. Salt and other humectants can cause warts. Humectants draw moisture in from the air and they can activate the mixture. If you live in a humid climate, it's probably best to stay away from salt. If the sides won't stick together, this could mean that the mixture wasn't wet enough or the mixture is too wet and sticking to the mold, but more than likely it's a molding issue. Fill the mold, pack it, put loose mix on top, do that for both sides, then smush the two sides together. The loose mix on top is crucial. This is what makes the two sides fuse together. Soft bombs could mean the mixture was too wet or it was too humid, or from improper molding and not packing enough mix in. Mold the bomb as usual, take it out, 
turn it and mold it once more. If you notice any soft spots, add more mix to the other side and mold it again. The bombs shouldn't be hard to make, but they shouldn't be easy either. The perfect amount of mix usually takes some squeezing and tapping. But more than likely, it's from too much oil and or polysorbate 80. Decrease these. For harder bath bombs, incorporate water in the recipe and or hardeners like clay or cream of tartar. A flat bottom means the mixture was too wet or not enough mix was added. You should support the bath bomb shape using mold, egg foam, or bubble wrap while they're drying. If the bombs won't float, this could be from too much wet ingredients, making the bath bomb too heavy. For a standard recipe like this, you should only add 15 to 20 milliliters of wet ingredients. But more than likely, the bombs are just not dry enough. After making them, dry them 12 to 24 hours, then shrink wrap them. They'll continue to dry in the shrink wrap. Also, some shapes float better than others. Bombs with more surface area float better, and bowl-shaped bombs will always float. If you're having issues, it's normal and it's not your fault. There are several factors that play into this, but there are two things you must remember going forward. First, bath bombs are extremely finicky. A recipe that worked fine one day may not work the next. This is four batches of bath bombs, all made with successful recipes that I've used before. I was stumped on why nothing was working, so I thought about it and decided to check the humidity. It was 36%, which is abnormally low for where I live, so I figured it couldn't be that, but I experimented and sure enough it was. I increased my wet ingredients and my bath bombs instantly got better. Second, bath bombs are tricky and meticulous. They require a perfect balance of wet to dry ratios. The difference between a perfect bath bomb and one that crumbles could be a few milliliters of wet ingredients. That's insane if you think about it. All I can say is practice and experimentation is the key to conquering bath bombs. I made a playlist with all the information you need to make a great bath bomb and it's at the end of the video. Also linked in the description is this experiment sheet that I created. This will help you along your journey to creating the perfect recipe.